Hi, I'm Vili from Greenwood Solutions. This week's presentation is on generators for off-grid applications. You've got a solar system, you've got energy storage, but invariably in an off-grid application, you will need a fossil fuel component, and we'll be talking about these in quite a bit of detail. In most cases when designing an off-grid system, a generator is required due to many factors. Probably the main one is large loads for sustained periods may be better off serviced by um, a generator. During cloudy conditions, batteries may be put under undue strain, hence the requirement for generator input. Limited solar uh, due to space constraints, so generator shares the workload. So they're all working in conjunction with each other. Now with generators, there's effectively three main fuel types, diesel, petrol and gas, both natural and LPG. With diesel generators, the options are 1500 RPM, which means revolutions per minute, water cooled, 1500 RPM air cooled, and 3000 RPM air cooled. If the generator is required daily, it's classed as prime power. And usually a 1500 RPM water cooled diesel generator is the order of the day. So these generators are designed to operate all day, every day, thump, thump, thump. They're generally twice the price of a unleaded petrol generator um, and invariably a lot less noisy. Less often, a 1500 RPM air-cooled diesel generator. Less again, 3000 RPM petrol or natural gas or an LPG generator. So in this fantastic picture, and you can see the, the artistic input here, it's, it's a quality picture, best I can do. Um, we have a house, it's completely off grid. We have a water tank, which is fed by the gutting on the house. And where do we put the generator? Be very aware that of the prevailing winds in the area in which you're going to install this generator. So if I put the generator too quick and the prevailing wind is coming that way, there's a high chance of particulate matter especially diesel particulate matter, which is really horrible stuff, will foul or F the water supply. It's a big thing. So be aware of prevailing winds. Also, if I'm situating this generator really close to the house, noise. And you could say, well, Valley, I'm using a sound attenuated generator. Be very aware. Some customers are very sensitive to sounds. Others don't give it, don't care about a sound at all. So if you can, obviously you want to design a system so the generator is, is fairly close to the, um, the main switchboard, etc., and where all the other gear is. If you can put it as far away from the residence as possible, and as far away from the water supply as possible, that's always a good thing. Again, um, it, it's really important, where, especially with the bigger generators, because once you put them in position, it's really hard to move them, especially if uh, the customer says, oh, well, I don't really like the position, I can hear it, so take that into consideration. Generator selection criteria include, the THD should be less than 10%, and this is the total harmonic distortion. Ideally, it's less than 4%, and mains power is around about 4%. Should have an AVR, which is an automatic voltage regulation system as well. What is the generator power factor? What's kilowatts to KVA? And what's the optimum loading, the standby, continuous, and prime? This is the ratio between kilowatts and kilovolt amps, KVA, that is drawn from an electrical load. Generators usually have a 0.8 power factor. The higher the power factor, the more efficient is the transfer of energy. 0.8 power factor times 8 KVA is 6.4 kilowatt. 0.8 power factor times 10 KVA is 8 kilowatt output. 0.8 power factor times 12 kVA is 9.6 kilowatt. So you can see obviously the kVA rating of a generator effectively is not its true output. 
general rule of thumb is to load all generators between 85, or between sorry, between 80 to 85 percent of their of their capacity. So if you have an 8 kVA generator, power factor of 0 0.8, 8 times 0 0.8 times 0.85 gives you 5.44 kilowatts. What is the difference between standby, continuous and prime power ratings? In emergency situations, the generator is only required for a very short duration and this is a standby generator, so it has a standby rating. If you're supplying power continuously to a constant load, but you're not servicing overloads, the generator has a continuous rating. Now, unlimited runtime, primary power source, basically you're looking at a prime power rating. So it's really important to see the generator you've selected, what its actual rating is. Is it a standby rating, a continuous or a prime power rating? Generator has to service the load, charge the batteries, and a lot of the times do both. Look, the other thing too with these generators, some of them are incredibly large. And there was a case a few years ago, I was involved with a generator and it was on a place called French Island, which is in Victoria, we're completely off grid. And um, we got the generator to the site, but we realized we had to get the generator into the shed. It was over muddy ground. We had no other equipment. We, weren't plan we hadn't planned for this particular scenario. And we had to roll the generator on um, galvanized steel pipes, sufficient to say a 800 kilo uh, kilogram generator took uh, about three hours to roll 40 or 50 yards over some very muddy ground. So just be aware Generators are heavy, especially the largest one, larger ones. So the logistics of how you get them into sight can play a massive role. You know, don't make the mistake that we made. Um, but it never happened again. Always learn from your mistakes. So what about appliance surges? Ideally, the generator wants to run at about 80 to 85% capacity. So you have to look at the generator's alternator rating in regards to be able to address inductive load startup surges. Conclusion. Usually a generator is required with most off-grid systems. There's a range of generators from 1500 RPM water-cooled diesel to 3000 RPM petrol units. What generator you select is based on size, duration of the loads and other inputs. Remember to take into account power factor and optimum loading when sizing. Thanks very much for watching this week's presentation on generators for off-grid systems. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, please feel free to drop us a line. And if you see fit, hit that subscription button. Bye for now.